हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू शिक्षार्थी इन दिस सेशन वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग लाइन्स एंड एंगल्स सो लेट स्टार्ट नाउ हियर आई एम ड्रॉइंग टू लाइन्स नाउ इन द वेरी फर्स्ट प्लेस लेट एस ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड Why do I say that these are two lines? Now, a line would always have two arrows at their extremities, which symbolizes that their length cannot be measured. This is one aspect to this. The other aspect here is why do we call a line as a line with two arrows at both the extremities is because its length is immeasurable third why is the length immeasurable because it extends from an infinity to another anf- infinity now when i say it extends from infinity to another infinity what i intend to say here is let us say this end is a and this end is b Similarly, the end for the other line, let's say, is C, and the other end for the other line is D. Now, A is a point which cannot. A is not a point. Is the point that I'm trying to make. B is not a point. It extends to A. It extends to B on the other side. Analogously, the second line extends to C. or it extends to d on the other side which is why we call it as a line because the length of this line cannot be measured it is immeasurable or it extends from one infinity to another infinity moving forward when we say it extends from one infinity to another infinity what we trying to what i am trying to convey here is it extends from a lesser infinity which is negative infinity to a greater infinity which is positive infinity i hope you would have understood this now the second concept which comes into picture here is so let me write down the concepts here one is what is a line that we have already discussed second what is a transversal now transversal is nothing but a form or or, or a kind of a line only how is it different let us try and, and understand that now if i draw another line let us say the end points or the extreme ends are denoted by e and f we will call e f as a transversal why because a line which intersects another line at two different points lying on the same plane is known as a transversal similarly what i'm drawing here is let us say another transversal i'm drawing here and let us say the end point of this transversal are denoted by g and h so can i say that even the line gh is a transversal yes and what are the lines that we had drawn here so essentially you can say all these four different lines are lines only and among these four lines you have two transversals and those two transversals are ef and gh so here we have drawn four lines okay next important point here is now when we have already talked about lines let us talk about now the by product of this entire discussion because here the agenda is we are talking about lines and angles so you would see that because of these four different lines that we have drawn here there is a triangle that gets generated out of this exercise let me just extend the second line that we had drawn originally so that we are able to demarcate 
so let me extend this now these are straight lines so we have drawn four straight lines now so the next thing that we need to understand here is what is the definition of a straight line so when we say this is a line the implicit meaning here is a straight line only why because the angle that is made here is 180 degrees which angle are we talking about let us talk about the line ab such that this point which lies on the line we are taking it as o now the if the angle we are talking about the angle aob given that ab is a straight line is 180 degrees so if angle aob is equal to 180 degrees then ab is a straight line and the converse of this statement if ab is a straight line then the angle aob will be equal to 180 degrees this is the concept of a line and the angle which is given rise to because of the line that we would have made or a straight line that we would have made now what i'm assuming here is let us say this point is o and to make it further clear so what i am saying here is the intersection point of these for example the intersection point of the transversal gh with ab and ef which forms one of the vertex of the triangle so there is the first vertex of the triangle that has been made here let us say let us take this as i so let me write it here this vertex i am taking it as j i am talking about this vertex is denoted by j and the third vertex which is formed here is this because of three lines and those three lines are line ce line gh the third line was is the third line required here no so the point that i have already made is if you want to have an angle the angle will be made because of any two lines and because here refers to between any two lines and just for the sake of discussion i am taking this triangle down just for the sake of discussion and we know that the vertex points we have already taken so this vertex point is j and this vertex point is k now once you have understood this concept now let us move ahead okay so now let us say that if i take a straight line ab such that from a point i am able to divide it into three parts as i have already drawn in the first case first case here refers to the first diagram that i have already drawn and i am referring to the first diagram from where i am borrowing this discussion so this line is ab this line is gh and the third line that we have taken here is ef so here you would see that the angle aob and if the point of intersection here is o if i refer to this the discussion that i have done here if the angle aob is equal to 180 degrees can i say that now let me divide this angle into three parts first part is from here to here second part is from here to here and the third part is here to here so can i say if this angle is a if this angle is b 
and if this angle is C so what I am trying to say here is if angle B O E is equal to A degrees comma angle E O G is equal to B degrees comma angle G O A is equal to C degrees then using the angle property of a straight line can I say that A degrees plus B degrees plus C degrees is equal to 180 degrees of course using this property now in the first diagram so here let me assume this is a let me say that this angle which is a i c is b which is g i e i'm sorry and the third angle here let's say this is c so in that case we already know that a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degrees we already know this let's use this and let's write it down so we already know that the angle property of a straight line is this once we already know this can we say that the angle so now we already know that EF is a straight line so this is a property that was given rise to because because AB is a straight line I'm using short forms here so ST dot refers to a straight line similarly we know that FE is a straight line FE is a straight line so we did a property few minutes back wherein if there is a straight line then the angle made between the three points which are collinear so now if there are three points lying on a straight line such that the angle made by the points let's say AOB if I refer to this discussion is 180 degrees in that case the three points A, O, B are collinear. Collinear means they are lying, all the three points are lying on a straight line. So, using this property, we can say that angle B plus angle C plus another third angle that we don't know. Now, in that case, we don't know, but we would say that this angle is also a now further so we'll be able to say that angle b plus c plus a is equal to 180 degrees further to this now i we already know that the line gh is a straight line Hence, we'll be able to say now the angle GH, you already have angle C in GH, you already have angle A, so the remaining angle that we'll be getting there would be B, which is equal to 180 degrees. Right? So, in that case, can we say that the remaining angle here, this angle would be B? yes we can say this and this is angle a which is denoted by let's say blue color okay so as a byproduct we are getting something here what is a byproduct here now as a byproduct when we have discussed this we'll be able to say that angle a okay this should be angle b So we'll be able to say that these are 
two angles which are vertically opposite to each other we are talking about angle G I E and angle F I H they are vertically opposite to each other now even before this we could have completed this discussion and we could have said that this angle the remaining angle that could have been made here is angle C and why because using the property of uh, angle GH which is a straight line so we are talking about the other side so a transversal will always have two sides or a line will always have two sides one side uh, is on one, one, one side and the other side is on the other side meaning thereby if I say the transversal or the line AB has two sides I can say that one is the upper side and the other is the lower side the upper side have has angles like CBA in the clockwise manner and the lower side has angle ABC in the anti-clockwise manner ABC so a transversal will give rise to angles either being made in the clockwise direction or the anti-clockwise direction okay so now can we say angles these are vertically opposite angles I am using it as VO similarly can we use vertically opposite angles in other cases also yes we can and then as a byproduct we can talk about some other varieties of angles also as a byproduct So now we'll be able to say that the angle GIE is equal to angle FIH FIH which are vertically opposite and here now I am ref referring to vertically opposite angles so can I say this is equal to B AIG A I G which is equal to C and B I H which is again equal to C and the third vertically opposite pair of angles would be AIF AIF which is A degrees and the same is also manifested by BIE so all of these are vertically opposite angles Now, once you have understood this now as a byproduct you can talk about many other vertically opposite angles by doing the combination now combination here refers to a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c which are nothing but the two sides of a transversal or you can combine b and c together and you can say that angle e i a and the angle b i F are vertically opposite this is a combination of angles B and C similarly the combination of the angles B and A which is nothing but angle G I B is the same as angle A I H and the last but not the least is the combination of the angles A and H which denote or which are denoted by uh, the vertices or let's say the points E I H which is equal to G I F so these are all the examples of vertically opposite angles now let us refer to another perspective wherein I have drawn two parallel lines I hope just to revise we had taken two parallel lines a B with C D here the blue colored line or the diagram that I have drawn here again I am taking two parallel lines which are AB and CD and on that I am making a line which is perpendicular to both that means the line EF which is a transversal is perpendicular to both the parallel lines AB and CD such that you can see the diagram here further so here if you relate this diagram 
with the first diagram that I have drawn, I have taken the value of A as 90 degrees followed by B and C. So we'll be able to say that B plus C is equal to 90 degrees. So from the first discussion that had taken place, which was this, this is the concept of, uh, you can say, uh, supplementary angles wherein the sum of the given angles let us say two angles here we could have taken any two angles as A along with BC B along with AC or C along with AB as one, 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 180 degrees and when we are taking the sum of two angles as 90 degrees then we are talking about complementary angles so this discussion comes as a byproduct wherein the sum of any two angles when it is equal to 180 degrees that means this is a straight line this this represents a set straight line wherein the sum of any two angles is equal to 180 degrees is known as supplementary pair of angles and if i have the pair of the uh, you know the addition of two angles as 90 degrees in that case we call them as complementary angles so in this case when i refer to this diagram you would see that Now, if one angle is 90 degrees, B plus C will also be 90 degrees. In that case, we'll be able to say that this is nothing but which is B plus C, which is equal to 90 degrees. So we get a new concept here. And what is a new concept here? If in the first diagram, we are able to say that angle A, I, F is equal to A degrees, then at the same time, we'll be able to say that the angle K, J, I, will also be equal to A. At the same time, the other angle that we were talking about, this, this becomes B plus C is what we were talking about. If the sum of two angles is equal to 180 degrees, then we refer to it as pair of supplementary angles. Analogously, we'll be able to say that the third angle which lies inside the triangle will be equal to C. Analogously. So we'll be able to say angle B I H. So let's write it down. Angle B I H is equal to angle D K I. which is equal to C. At the same time, we said sometime earlier that the angle A I F is equal to angle C J I, which is equal to A. And the third pair that we were getting here was, which we had written earlier. So that was B. So now you would see out of these, we are able to get two such pairs and these pairs will be known as alternate angles. We call these angles as alternate angles. So as a byproduct, finally, can I say that the angle A, I, F plus the angle C, J, F, which lie on the same side of the transversal is equal to 180 degrees? Yes. So now finally, let us accumulate all our learnings. We learned what are lines. We talked about lines. We talk, talked about transversals. Then we talked about uh, what is the theorem of a straight line in terms of the angle that is made by a straight line. Then from 180 degrees, we were able to talk about supplementary pair of angles. Then we talked about uh, law of parallelism. So law, of, what is law of parallelism? You would see that two parallel lines give rise to alternate angles 
and on the straight line two different sides of a straight line had you drawn the transversals on a straight line for example the three transversals that we are referring to here are AB, GH and EF that would give rise to vertically opposite angles. Once you have done that then you can talk about law of perpendicularity wherein if I draw a perpendicular to two given parallel lines then the angle that would be made between them would be 90 degrees. Henceforth we were able to typify one of the angle as 90 degrees and the sum of remaining two angles which was B and C as 90 degrees which is nothing but the complementary pair of angles. And finally we were able to deduce that A plus B plus C is nothing but the sum of three interior angles of a triangle which is equal to 180 degrees.